Welcome back to the Compound Podcast. This is episode 199. 199, our last episode before the big 200, presented by Connect Roasters, best coffee in the business, the coffee that's fueling the Chicago Cubs. We have two codes for you. Two codes. Don't forget them. Code Compound Club. Compound Club for 25% off your first home run club order or code compound 15 for 15% off site wide. Dakota is laughing at something on his phone, but he also had a connect roasters experience at work. I did. I had uh, I went up to an athlete today, uh, asked him how he was doing. And the first thing he said to me was good. I had connect roasters this morning. And I said, wait a minute, I've heard of that. And then I told him about the home run club. That's all the way out in Seattle. We got somebody drinking Connect Roasters to start their mornings. And that's what we need. That's what we need. We need people across the country waking up with Connect Roasters because when you ask them how their day is going, guess what they'll say to you? It's great because I started my day with Connect Roasters. That's how I feel every day. Dakota's on his phone, but I'm going to keep the show going. What do you, okay? what do you want me to say? Going. Nope, I got it. I'll take you care of it. You didn't even throw it to it. me. Text Why doesn't Zach have to, to say anything? You text whoever you need to text. Why doesn't Zach Dakota. have to say anything? Why am I getting yelled at? Dakota. I didn't know anybody who had Connect Roasters this morning. Well, that's a oh, problem, too. You should yeah, talk to problem. the Mets about getting down in the clubhouse. That's a problem. Dakota. Yes, sir. I need to ask you a question. Uh, hopefully, I have an have, answer. Do you have objects, maybe uh, decals or suns and stars on your fan? Uh, I sure do. Uh, I did not put them there. They were here when I moved in. They are. They're like flowers. They're like flowers on the fan. And it's really cute. Uh, really ties the room together, if you ask me. Is that is that is it soothing to you when you go to sleep and you can look up at the at all the decals? <laughs> it is. It is. It's not like it had to have been like a kid's room at some point. I don't know. We rent the house. Uh, so I don't know. But uh, yeah, it's really peaceful. Uh, ties the room together. I love them. Dakota, take how, them down how, even if I could. Speaking of being out there, how is the weather out there right now? Uh, if you, well, actually it's sunny or not sunny, but it's uh dry right now, but it's, it's rained probably have been here nine days. It's probably rained eight of them. Is it so cool out? What you expect? It, yeah. What's uh, like the, what's the temp? No, it's actually not bad. It's like 50 today. And I think it's supposed to be like 70 this weekend. Dude, in between 50 and 70 is just like perfect, man. Yeah. This 70 and fun. sunny on Saturday. Ooh, boy. But then a lot of rain next week. That's, you know, that's what you get. So what you get you out here? I know how much I like to layer. That would be good for my for my layers. You do. Yeah, I'm a, la- I'm a layer guy too. But not like Ian. I don't know no, if I've no, ever seen yeah, Ian and in, no. in like it's it could be 95 degrees in Chicago and he's wearing a pullover. Doesn't matter. Exactly I like right. that too. I'm down for that. And, and pants, of course, because you're a classy guy. Before we get too deep in the episode, I do want to say for episode 200, what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask all of our former guests to leave a voicemail. We're going to see how many we get, but we also want to answer some fan questions. So when you answer some fan questions, you're going to call this number. I'm going to tell you a number. You're going to call it. You're going to leave a voicemail. Tom's going to sift through all of them and only pick the best ones. So if you don't get picked, it's Tom's fault. 347-685-9404. I'll say it one more time. 347 685 Zero four. Tom's Dakota, picking. what was that number? It's Tom's fault. You don't get picked. Uh, six three four seven six eight five nine four zero four three four seven six eight five nine four zero four. Good job, Dakota. It's in the chat. It's in the chat. Big up. I know. That's, I was looking at it. <laughs> Dakota. Dakota. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sorry. Have you made any new friends? Oh yeah. Come on now. I'm a social. I'm a social butterfly. Of course, I got I friends. Thought that about you. Well. I mean, I talked to pretty much just the pitching guys and the R and D guys. I haven't really ventured out to the hitting guys yet. Um, I don't know too much about hitting, so I feel like so no. That's a perfect, perfect time to learn about it. Eh. Well, do you I'm, worried I'm worried about, about my end. Friends? I'm worried about my guys. Do you want to shout out any new friends? I mean, the guys I live with are awesome. Like it's it's cool. It's cool, cool place. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a good. Any time. Late night bottles of wine with those friends. No, I actually haven't We're drank at all yet. since I've been out here. Uh, I mean, the schedules are weird. Like, everyone has a different off day. 
except for Sunday, everyone's off Sunday. So like, it's kind of weird. Like I'm off Thursday, Sunday, but other another guy I live with is Wednesday, Sunday, and another one's Monday, Sunday. So like really the only day you can do anything together would be like Saturday night. There which you go. we haven't yet. I've been here one Saturday night, so we haven't yet. For the record, Dakota's saying he doesn't know anything about hitting. Guy went. Guy batted 500 last year. I don't know. What People the fuck forget, about. Tom. People forget. It's all about Oppo. You just gotta see it deep. Work the other way. You know what I'm saying, Zach? You know what I'm saying? I got that yeah. footage for you. Like I overlaid it with Hap. I'll send it over to them if they want to look at it. You know, maybe show some hey, students. Hey, maybe the next thing you know, I'm gonna have to learn how to be a hitting coach. Do a little of both. They're like, hey, this guy can swing it. He knows what he's doing. You never know. Utilize me. I'm a tool. How are you doing with your West Coast time adjusting? It's insane. It's insane. Like, I was telling you guys before we started recording, I'll get done with work and I'll check. Like, I follow all sports. So, like, hockey, basketball, and like, there's five games already done. And I'm like, what? How's this possible? This shouldn't be legal. I miss everything. It kind of stinks. I'm going to be honest. It kind of stinks. I'm an East Coast, Beast Coast guy, East Coast or die. Um, not or die. Too far. It's just different, um, man. Like the game shouldn't be over when it's light out. But it is nice. I was saying earlier too that like when we're working, we can put on the TV like spring training games right now, like start at 10 o'clock here, at least in Florida. So like that's sick just to be able to like throw games on. But it, yeah, it doesn't feel right. Like it doesn't feel, I'm very glad it's not football season because that would hurt me. Dude, that'd be, yeah, that's just not really right. weird. It's not right. Waking up, getting the crusties out of your eyes, and, and it's about to kick off, you know? Oh, yeah. Like, I want, give me a one o'clock start, 103. So it's, Ian, you kind of, Ian, you've got a foot uh, kind of all over the country. You have a house in Texas, you play in Chicago, and then in Arizona, spring training, they don't observe daylight savings. What time is it right there or right now? Same time as you. We're on Pacific now. Okay. So like but you kind of see all different. Mountain. Do you have a favorite? I, do, I try to prefer? see. I try to see all the time. Central is the best time zone. There's no question about it. There's no, there's no debate. Central is the best time zone because you get every you get all the live sports an hour before the East Coast, and um, it's just a better time zone in general. You don't feel too dis- disconnected from the East Coast, but you also get the benefit of only being two hours away from the West Coast time zone. So it's the best time zone, and you're in the middle of the country, so it's easy to get anywhere. Yeah, but you can't say East Coast, Beast Coast. And me and Zach will, and Tom probably. Tom, you with us? I was like, I'm an East Coast 100%. guy. I, I've lived in three of the three of the four time zones. Apologies to Mountain Time Zone. But I've lived in three of the four, and I, I prefer the East Coast the most. Although, so I'm also a late night person. So that's that what plays into it as well. I love like the game, like the Pac 12, RIP Pac 12, but the game of the Pac 12 games at night. Love it. That's for, that's for me. Uh, yeah, but I'll give Ian the credit of central and that there are times where like a football game gets done Sunday night and it's like 1130 and you're like, man, I wish it was just a little bit earlier. Yeah. Isn't central is late? definitely second best. I think central second best in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. The thrill and excitement of March mania is here and DraftKings Sportsbook, One of America's top rated sports book apps is giving new customers a shot to turn five bucks into $150 instantly in bonus bets with any college basketball bet. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code COMPOUND. New customers can bet five bucks to get $150 instantly in bonus bets only at the DraftKings Sportsbook with code COMPOUND. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Or in West Virginia, visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 and over, age varies by jurisdiction, void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.co slash b ball for eligibility and deposit restrictions terms and responsible gaming resources first topic jd davis we're gonna talk we gotta talk about it i didn't know that was a, i didn't know this was a thing i, I think saw something about always, it the other day i think this has always been a thing 
I don't think this is a new rule. I think this has always been a rule. I was going to say what I first saw before this all happened is that in his arbitration case, his agent said that the Giants didn't give him a single offer until one hour before the deadline. He got zero offers and that was their only offer. And it was one hour before the deadline. And the agent, he's like, I, in my 22 years, I've never in my life seen this. And that Dakota, the other, is the other key scummy. part of that is the, is the offer they gave him was significantly like hundreds of thousands of dollars less than the number they filed at. Cause he yeah. said he would have taken the number they filed for him, but they never offered him that number. What was the that's, spread? That's where it's scummy to me. What was the spread? Sure. I don't think they actually, I don't, they didn't, they don't think they put the, the numbers in the article, but they said it was hundreds of thousands of dollars different. I know the Giants filed at 655, I believe. I don't know what he, I don't, I don't know offhand. They, I that. think he agreed I, at 6 9, right? I saw or something. He won at, at 6 9. He, he won at 6 9. So there was, yeah, you know, 400 grand, 350 grand. But the, it's not completely and totally uncommon for a team to file above their best final offer. That's not like completely unheard of. Did they do that to uh, you out of curiosity? What? Did they do that with you out of curiosity? No, they filed at their best offer when I went to trial, but um, sometimes you can make yourself money just by going to trial, even if you lose, because the team will file slightly higher to get to a midpoint where they feel like they can win the case. So that that does happen from time to time, but um, this this definitely seemed like a case where they were protecting themselves in case they got Kevin. But then they... But, released him let's tell people what happened yeah what happened was jd davis he's going through the arbitration process he goes to a trial he wins the trial he's set to make 6.9 million dollars in 2024 there's a before you get to this can you just i just explain or i know we've gone a lot over arbitration but can you just explain it maybe to people that may not understand the two putting in the two numbers and that stuff yes i will tom arbitration is the process years four, five, and six of service time. So three years of arbitration, you go and you talk to the team and the team says, we want to pay you this much. And you say, no. So in J.D. Davis' case, the team says, we want to pay you 6.25. And he says, no, I think I'm worth 6.9. Pay me 6.9. And you negotiate back and forth. And then eventually there's a deadline on the deadline. If you can't come to an agreement, the team puts in their number, which in this case was 655. Jay Davis puts in his number, which is 69. And then you go to a hearing where there's a panel of three arbitrators. You both make your case. They decide one number or the other number, no in between. And you can either win, take your number, or you lose, and the team gets their number. Yes, Dakota. Do how teams will sometimes go up? Do players ever say, like, I think I'm worth 7 1? Okay, we're going to ARB. I'm going to file at 6 9 because I think it's more likely I get that. Yeah. Well, generally, the team is the one putting forward numbers. And as a player, you're not saying seven, you have to get to seven. You know, you're saying, you're saying that's not good enough. I'm worth more. Here's the comps. And you're giving, you're giving player comps of guys who have been paid in the past at certain numbers. Uh, and trying to get the team up closer to your number, and you know, generally they don't hit it, but they get. You, know, you have to make a decision at the last hour, and that's did they get close enough that it's not worth going to a trial, which is what happened to me the last my last two years of arbitration. It was you know not exactly what you want, but close enough that probably not worth going to a trial over. So, in this case, they go to a trial. JD Davis wins the trial, so he's set to make six point nine million dollars in twenty twenty four. There's a loophole in the arbitration language that basically says if you get released during spring training the team only owes you uh what's the right wording for this tom 30 days 30 days they owe you 30 days of pay it's termination pay sorry termination termination pay the team has to pay you termination pay instead of your full salary so which in jvd jd davis's case is 1.5 million so that's what he's getting instead of the six nine Yes. So this this has happened before, but not um not like not very often. And I don't think as uh, with a guy that's as high profile as JD Davis, um, or making as much money as JD Davis. So it's gonna be very interesting to see when a team picks him up, how much money they give him, 
does it make up the rest of that salary? Is it way less than that? Is somebody going to try to pick him up for 2 million bucks and he makes half of what he was supposed to make through the art process? Like we'll find out. That's what I was going to ask is if he gets picked up by, or signs with another team is he, or is the team on the hook for, or does he get his 6.9 or does he get the 1.5? It's a full new, he still gets the 1.5 no matter what. It's a full new contract. Like the 6.9 is gone. Yeah. Wow. So then no matter what, he's only making 1.5 this year. No, he can sign a new deal with say the athletics. Okay. Okay. I got you. Gotcha. 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 Okay. So basically the team can join two, three, four, five, six million bucks. It's just going to depend if there's a market out there, if people are looking to pick him up, like, and if you think (laughs) you're going to make that amount of money and then this happens like that's, and he only ends up making half what he was supposed to make like that sucks. And what's tough is, Ian, you've said it, and it's, like, well-documented and known that, like, the R process, like, if you go to trial, it's literally just the team saying how bad you are and why they shouldn't have to pay you this much. And then for yeah. him to win his case and then get to this point, the Giants are like, oh, we're cutting you. So it's like, oh, you you meant what you said in that meeting. Like, you really don't think I'm that good. Well, it's so hard it's to tough. win an arbitration case. It's a brutal process, but it's so hard to win an arbitration case and to have the to have the guts to go to an ARP hearing to win it and then to not get the reward for that is that sucks. Ian Happ want to know in ARP cases. People forget. Correct. Yeah. Can I ask you, how did we end up with this process? Because this process, I mean, obviously it's been in the CBA for a long time, not just specifically about the loophole, but the whole arbitration process. Like if you explain this to someone who didn't follow sports, They'd be like, why are we doing this? That this is an insane system of of doing it this way. I mean, yeah, the reason why it was put in place um, through collective bargaining is that players were looking for a way to get closer to their value. So, you know, free agency has been after six years. And so players were being paid league minimum up until that point. And so they were fighting for their ability to, you know, make more than the league minimum through those last, you know, three years of control. And so this is the process that they came up with. It's not perfect. It's not great, but it does give players the ability to fight for salaries closer to what they're worth. You know, Juan Soto is making $30 million an ARB this year. You know, those things have helped players get paid more and it's not a perfect system and we could probably do it better, but um, it's pretty entrenched right now. Do you think, like you said, it's happened before, but like, do you think like it being high profile like this, it's something that'll be looked at in the next CBA of like, okay, we can't let this happen to the players of just like, oh, you won your case. Well, we're cutting you anyway. So who cares? Yeah, I think it's definitely something that'll be brought up. It's like when you have stuff like this happen in high profile situations, Chris Bryant was a good example. Like when Chris was kept down so that they could retain an extra year of service from him. In 2016, Chris Bryant gets called up literally one or two days after the deadline to get a full year of service. Wins rookie of the year, wins MVP the next year. The team got a full year. Instead of holding him for six years, they got to hold him for seven years because they kept him down for those two extra days he sh- should he have broke with the team to start the season probably but he didn't and they were able to do that and they won in a actually in the hearing you know he filed um a grievance and the team won the grievance and so that rule was revisited in the last collective bargaining agreement and that's why now if you win rookie of the year finish second you get a full year of service there's some other things that that can happen to and it, the team gets rewarded with a draft pick. Like those, those new rules were put in place because of what happened to Chris Bryant. And to be fair, like to the GMs and teams, if I was the Cubs in 2016 and you told me, Hey, you get whatever, what it's like a month, like they had to play in the minors a month. Like, Hey, if you leave like him in AAA weeks. for a month, you get a full extra year. I'd be like, yeah, I'll probably do that. Yeah. We'll take, we'll take that. Like, that's just said that's where, like 2015. But and that's where like the CBA is so important because like there is like little loopholes in that like owners and GMs find ways to like kind of screw over the players. But at the same time, if you're on their side, you're like, why wouldn't we do this? The other thing that I think we haven't said, just to make it clear to the audience as well, is if he had agreed to that six five five number, so <laughs> difference of four thousand four hundred thousand dollars, 
if he gets cut, he's getting that money guaranteed. So that's the biggest difference now between what's happening and what and why the, the one point five is so. So again, so, oh, I didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah. So again, it could be maybe a conspiracy that the team knew, like, hey, we, we try to make him not agree and say we do sign Matt Chapman, we're not on the hook for that you know, $6.9 million, whatever it is. Yeah. It's, but, a, it's a crazy situation. And and to most teams, it's kind of inconsequential, but you are still giving up $1.5 million for a guy not to play for you. But nice I'm word. sure. Thank you. I'm, I'm very intelligent. Um, but you know what I mean? Like, you are still just losing $1.5 million. But at the same time, they're like, we don't want to pay him six point nine. We don't think he's worth that. We're saving five point four million. Yeah. If there's not a place on the roster for him, and it doesn't make it doesn't make sense. Like, but I also find it hard to believe there's not a place on their roster for him. The other thing that's that's crazy about this, and I think part of the reason this loophole is being exploited, is because of how crazy free agency is now. I mean, when yeah. was like look at the NFL free agency? This started this sun, you know, this Monday. We haven't even got to the point yet when teams can officially sign. I believe that's tomorrow, Wednesday, we're recording this Tuesday night. But we already know half the deals because there's actually action in the NFL free agency. This MLB free agent process has gotten so insane that it's so slow that this team, this is now allowed to happen. I mean, this really shouldn't even be happening because free agency should be done by the time, at least guys like Matt Chapman certainly should be off the market by the time free agency, by spring training starts. The fact that we're, you know, Carrying on to March here, guys. Blake Snell, the reigning Cy Young winner, the reigning Cy Young winner on March 12th is not signed. We don't know where he's playing baseball. He may not play baseball this year. Who knows? It's insane. Huh. Well, and, well, and we discussed that. Um, I think it was like in text. Ian, I'm curious what you think. Actually, I'm going to ask that. I don't know if you want to discuss it or not. We'll see. I'll just ask and Tom can cut it if not. Do you think in the Blake Snell case that there could be a hint of collusion is a big word. It's a a bad word. It's a nasty word. But do you think (laughs) there could be a hint of it to where they were just like, Boris keeps gouging us. We're not going to let him do it this time. I think, I think that all the teams have the same information on pitch metrics. There's so much data out there now right because stack cast captures everything we have all these pitch metrics everybody has their spin rates their everything and everybody is using a very similar model to project the wins above replacement because even when you look at like zips and i don't know there's like three of them right to come out zips fan graphs something else and they all have projections for the year they're all relatively close on like with the war of the player. And then they just do what's the dollar per war and everybody gets to a pretty similar spot. And so they're willing to pay and, you know, maybe they're aging him. Maybe the age curve is crazy, but like they're willing to pay a certain number for the production. And like basically every team is using that model now. Yeah. Fair. Which, and there's, but that doesn't like that doesn't take into account that like Jordan Montgomery has made all of his starts. If you go look at Jordan Montgomery's baseball reference page, like Jordan Montgomery pitches. Like mm-hmm. the last I'm gonna pull it up and I'm gonna read you off. He made he made 29 starts in 2017. And then starting in 2020, he made 10 starts. In 2020, which is all of his starts, he made 30 starts in 21. He made 32 starts in 22, and he made 32 starts in 23. Like, you could you could say whatever you want for what he's worth, but, like, what is it worth to have a guy who's going to go out there and take the ball every five days, no matter what, and he's going to give you innings? Like, that's that's worth something, and you don't know, like, what the model factors in. And also, when you look at the model – of like the way that these projections go, like one good year or one bad year can skew the way the model sees, projects the data out for the next five years. So if you add another good year on the back end of that, then the model spits out another number and doesn't age you as hard on the aging curve and like everything changes. So 
you you tweak the numbers a hair and like it, the whole thing completely changes. The other thing with that too is that Montgomery's a really interesting case because he's a guy in when he got traded to the Cardinals in 2022 reinvented how he pitched and has become a you know this is the when I was when I saw with the Yankees I didn't expect him to be the one of the best pitchers on a World Series winning team within 18 months but he was and that's because he changed he started using that change up he changed how he pitched and that's also stuff that's not really factored in you know the human element of like hey this guy's all of a sudden changed how he, his entire pitching arsenal now that's right Tom um, people are changed since, since he left the Yankees he has a I'm not going to do the math exactly, but a somewhere between a three one one and a three two. So call it a three one five. Since he left the Yankees, like three one five in forty three starts. But that's my point. Like I get you're saying that there's all these algorithms to determine the worth of someone, but you're telling me there isn't a single team that couldn't use both of them. Like, and not that they don't have offers, but I'm saying like you say like this number or this algorithm determines how much they're worth, but I'm like, it's like Snell just won the Cy Young. Like he's worth more than any starting pitcher. But yeah, by that, saying that, you're by saying that, that stat right there, you're saying it, it doesn't make sense that nobody's willing to go above and beyond the model to go and get that pitcher to make their team better. Yes. Because by every, I mean, by the fact he was the AL MVP or AL Cy Young, he should be getting paid. I mean, I'm not saying he literally should, but like by that, he should be getting paid the most of any pitcher in the AL. Like that's just like how like he was the best pitcher in the Atlantic League or Atlantic League. Oh my gosh, American League last year. <laughs> Are your potatoes Whoop. mashed? Whoop. Also, but a uh, Garrett Cole won the AL Cy Young. You're talking about Blake Snell, the NL Cy Young winner. That's you know what I meant. All right, just keep, that's why we keep it, Tom. That's why we keep you around to keep me on my toes. Hey, speaking of check. Oh, two um, things. Yeah, we're oh, that's one of my, that's we're we're not gonna we're are we we're not gonna talk about we're not gonna ask a question about Garrett Cole, right, Tom? Are we gonna are we gonna check that guys? It's, over there? Guys, it's fine. They're sending it to more specialists. That's always a good sign, you know. When you get an MRI <laughs> and nobody says anything for multiple days about it, and then you send it out to more people. No, I'm not worried at all. I that's mean, what. That's I what I mean. By the time Go people ahead. hear this episode, they'll know what happens. And they'll be laughing because obviously he's completely fine and I'm not worried. Is well, Garrett it's, ever it's, had a, he's got Tommy John. Tommy John's it, coming for sure. But yes, I thought the same thing. Like I get like MRI results take time, but if it's more than 24 hours for someone that high profile, because you know they're rushing it. So it's judge, like if it's more than 24, it's the like same day. there's something wrong. Like they're they're worried about it for sure. Well, then you got judge sitting out for mid camp breast. Well, Whatever that means. You see, well, Dakota, he got an MRI. It said, and he got his oh, results. Oh, I didn't ready. see that. He got That's his what I mean. Ready? <laughs> like you're telling me, we don't have the UCL ones. We 100 percent do. <laughs> I, I think the I think the quote from Boone was mid spring training beat up, which is I don't know what that means. Hey, tell you what, it's though, spring the real, training, the real thing. I um, mean, I'm on the shelf right now. I can't. Uh, I can't say real. that. Zach. I was no, I think I, no, 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 Zach. It's not a thing. I don't want to. I'm not trying to say this in a mean way to you. It's not no, a I, thing for like everyday player. Like you know what I mean. I, like for Aaron Judge, he doesn't know, have to do anything if he but doesn't hey, want. You know, but again, ramping your body up. You don't like, and he hasn't really been particularly ripping the cover off the ball. So I'm sure that he's getting frustrated and kind of working more like on the backfields or in the cage. You know what I'm saying? Like. For sure. I think the, I think the biggest gripe and Tom correct me if I'm wrong is like how I, I haven't really seen much on it like how the injuries were presented and like they ask questions and they kind of like blow them off it's like no 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 all of a sudden it's like oh yeah he had an MRI um you know <laughs> I'm a former Yankees PR employee I mean it was an intern so low level. But I, I, as someone who watched many, many Aaron Boone press conferences, this is probably the number one thing in the world I'm actually on this podcast qualified to talk about. It is one of the funniest fucking things in the world, what the <laughs> Yankees do, because they'll do this They'll do this thing where clearly someone's hurt, like in this case, Aaron Judge. And for days, it'll be, ah, you know, Judge, you need to get off. Get, he loves to say he gets getting guys off his feet. We just want to get him off his feet, you know, or or they're worried about the turf monster, you know, that we always heard about the turf monster down in Tampa. It's always guys getting off his feet. It's so it's always just starts off, and you're that's always now when I hear any of those code phrases. 
alarm bells start going off because I know what that really means. So it's like a day or two of that. Then it's like, oh, Judgey's got like a little like hamstring thing, you know, whatever the injury is, but it's fine. He's good. We're going to sit him for a couple days and we'll see how it is. And then usually two to three days later, Boone will then start the press conference by saying, before I take any questions, I just want to tell you guys that Aaron Judge had season ending hamstring surgery and he won't be available till next season. So that's how, just so how we know how it goes. It starts off with, ah, we got to get him off his feet for a day. And then it ends up with season ending surgery, usually within a week. And God, I, Aaron Boone is a friend of John Boy Media, but I cannot tell you the number one reason I wanted to see him get fired is I can't watch more Aaron Boone press conferences where he lies to my face. He's Tom, him up you for can't his say that. You have to be a company man. You have to no. say nice things he's, about Boone. Hey, he's protecting know, his guys. Dude, right. he, he's protecting them. He's, he doesn't have all the answers right in front. Like, I, dude, I totally... That is but what you want from a manager. You, you do want like you don't to... want him airing everything out right no. there. He doesn't have every answer. A hundred percent. I mean, I understand from the Yankee perspective, and like, and obviously the player perspective. That's why the players love him. That's why the organizations kept him around despite some shaky years. Like, he is ultimately right. What was he doing before this? He was an ESPN announcer. He's a PR guy. That's one of his best skills. And you know, when he goes on John Boy Media and he goes on Talking Yanks, he's likable. Like, I get why they try to put him in those situations. But as a fan, it's so it's so infuriating to watch him do the same routine, knowing that we're going to end up in the same place, and we just can't get any fucking accountability. I'd like him I, to want. Dude, it, it is. I'm truth. sure it's. I'm sure it's hard. Like you don't know what like the diagnosis is, and like how he's feeling, and like you have 50 reporters in front of you with the New York media saying, "Hey, what happened?" And you're just like, "Uh." Not really also, sure. I don't want to. I don't want to put any panic buttons out there. But like, I don't know. I would just. I think that's a fair point, Zach. I think you bring up a fair point. I'd rather him just not talk about it then, or not. I think what bothers me is the initial. Oh, it's just getting him off his feet. Oh, it's it's the initial. We're not. We're we're covering for what the real injury. Because we're covering because we don't know. But I'm going to couch it in a way where it seems like it's not bad and or is positive only to eventually have the real reveal be that it's awful. And it makes that initial, hey, he's fine. You know, don't worry about ju- judgy. Guy's never been hurt. Come on, don't worry about him. It makes that part very frustrating to me. But I, I do hear your point. And I do, I had not honestly considered that. I do think that's a fair point. But if you're, God, if, if you're a player, play. if you're a player and you have something that's just a little tweak and you're going to be out for a few days and your manager goes out there and it's like, yeah, Hamstring speed up, like we'll see if he'll be back for opening day. He'll be like, What the fuck? Yeah, what the like, fuck? No, I'm gonna have to I, no, I'm gonna have to answer all these questions about this. Like he the the reason why those questions get answered that way is so that there's not fifty people in front of the players locker going like, Hey, what's going on? Like, we need to talk to you about this. Like I didn't talk to the media for like four days after my hamstring because I didn't want to answer all the questions until I was back out there, like moving around and doing stuff to be able to say, like, it's I'm good. I'll be back in a it's week. It's hard. And, 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 and like, especially in that building, I'm assuming the two best players, probably top five in baseball, like happening back to back days. Like, that's hard to deal with. And like to make sure, you know, I don't want to say everybody's story lines up just to make sure it like, doesn't sound like they're lying because they're not lying, obviously. But like. To make sure, you know, everybody's on the same page, kind of saying the same thing before even any tests are done or anything. Like that's it's hard to do. I think I don't know. Everybody has to answer questions. Everybody has to yeah, be like, like what's what's the lineup gonna like, be like if Judge not there? And then you're like And you know, and you know, like people are gonna try to get him to say certain things so then he can go back and say it to somebody else and like it create it you can create some tension, like you know, especially in New York, like New York, Chicago, like they're gonna want headlines you know like they're gonna ask the same question in a different way tom do we <laughs> like the prospect of the yankees offering a new trade for dylan cease yeah i mean i would dylan cease is i mean you guys know dylan cease is incredible would love dylan mm-hmm. cease to be a yankee um especially i saw spencer jones is supposedly not in those conversations the yankees you yeah. know top prospect so you could find a way to get Dylan Cease in a Yankee uniform without having to give up Spencer Jones. I, I'm signing that. And then if up. Cole is healthy still too, ooh, ooh Tom, ooh. Tom, yes. would you rather have Snell or Cease? 
Cease. Snow. Wow. My answer. That snow. was quick. Yeah, I, I, I'm not a big Montgomery. Snow guy. Montgomery or Cease. Cease. Wow. Thing with Montgomery Cease, or though, Snow. You're gonna, you're gonna get some lefties. No, you, some more lefties in there. This is a Tom. You can't. You there's an easy answer here in Montgomery or Snow because you already saw it with Montgomery in New York. Yeah, it's, it didn't prob- work. it's probably Snell. I mean, I don't know. I I, I got to be honest. Respect to both Montgomery and Snell, two great pitchers. Don't I don't really have a desire for either of them to be Yankees. Well, that's oh. crazy. Ooh, You're nuts. I had, I, I, I do really want one Rondon last year. I th- I think it, that the price point these are guys are, are you're paying for these guys. I don't really want them. Well, right now. well, maybe you'd want him if you knew his name was Rodon. No. Then maybe you'd want him. Maybe if he was hurt last year, I'd know his name better. Healthy? Can I? Yeah. Okay. How, can I? Can I, I tell you? Can I tell you? Okay. Hey, we're not no, holding injuries or people. Do you say. have an ad? Were you going to read an ad? Uh, no, I was going to tell you a story. I want to tell you a story about uh, my day in spring training the other day. But before I do, I want to tell you about Bruce Bolt. BruceBolt.us for all of your baseball needs. They have game hats. We love game hats. They have game hats. They have pants. They have shorts. They have batting gloves that we love. Uh, my batting gloves, baby blue, white with baby blue. I actually got an amazing video today. Uh, Justin Turner got a pair of batting gloves and he sent a video to Cody to send to me, uh, of him opening my batting gloves. That was fantastic. Thank you, JT. But game hats, game hats, unlike other stretch fit hats that only come in three sizes and never actually fit anyone properly. These game hats, they got a slight stretch, slight stretch. So they fit like the small is six and three quarters to seven. The mediums, seven to seven and a fourth. Be perfect for me. They got a large seven and a fourth, seven and a half. So they got all kinds of all kinds of sizes, advanced performing fabrics. They're sweat resistant. They have a soft brim that so gives you a, a slight little curve. Um, and you can get custom team hats with your logo on it. So it's pretty fantastic. Bruce Bolt game hats. If your team's looking for game hats for this spring, summer, BruceBolt.us. Can I tell you about a story of where I was wearing my Bruce Bolts? So I go down to the backfields to get some bats, get some game ABs in the minor league game. So they're doing scrimmage, minor league scrimmage. And David Peralta and I went down to hit. We let off every half inning. <laughs> and sometimes we hit multiple times in the half inning. I got 15 at bats. So you're good for spring. 15 at bats in six innings. It was unbelievable. And I was getting, I was getting pissed because I was not smacking baseballs. I was, I was like, I'm going to go down there. I'm going to hit rockets all over the field. And I was not doing that. And minor leaguers are still pretty good out there. Okay. But I did, I did hit some big league pop ups. I showed them what a big league pop up looked like because they could not catch it. I hit like four. I hit like four, just like skyrocket, like left field line. One that was like a foul ball on the first base side, and it was like Knox. big league pop up, a little different. Uh, but I did get, I did end the day with a right handed laser knock, and that was a great way to end my day. But fifteen at bats in two hours. It was crazy. I mean, I you're good. Today with, I saw a kid today with baby blue Bruce Bolts on. And I said, have you ever heard of Ian Happ? Yeah, you're welcome. I've used my first game. I used all whites. And then second game, I've used all blue. I've used all blue for the last however many games. And they're still great. Dude, why don't you rock mine out there? And I have no, I have no baby blue. <laughs> Can fix Ask that him for some of my quick. gloves and rock my gloves. The Mets have no baby blue. So, do the That's Braves enough. have lime green? No, but Azunia wears lime green. I also don't have a huge bank account, and I also don't have a lot of time under my belt. Yeah, a lot. You got a good amount. No, but you, got a, you got a friend. You got a friend that has baby blue batting gloves. I, my friend is also very rich and is an all-star and back-to-back gold glove winner. Ever heard of him? I got updated top exit velo right now in spring training. Minimum 10 at bats. Number six on this list, Zach Short, 97.5. No, because he's just going to get mad. He's going to get mad. No, I'm, no, I'm not. I'm, yes, you are. Are you getting rockets? Why Ian, am I mad? The only thing I'm mad at is I'm not hit. We get a text from Zach every game. 
not every game. It hasn't been every game, but it's been a lot of games. And it's another fucking line out. There's that I, word, but that was that. That's a quote. It, that's a quote. I didn't it's say it's just accent. honest. It was at a point where like I lined out the other day against the Tigers, and I was just like, What I say back to you though? I don't know. I said hit ball say? hard, you win. Yeah. Well, who said that? Didn't someone say we lost. that? When Springer. Yeah. It's hit ball hard, you Steve, win. Steve Springer. And that's why I said to Zach. Steve I said Springer, you hit it hard, hard, you win. You win. Yeah. But we lost. Um, but yeah, I've yeah, I've but hit- spring, if there's ever a time, this could sound bad, but I don't think it is. If there's ever a time that individual matters way more than team, it is spring training. Yeah. Um would you agree with that? I mean, that's yeah. just a fact. Like, Absolutely. no one cares if you win or lose the game. You just care if you did good. Like, that's really just all it is in spring. I mean, you, yeah, you want to play clean and well, obviously you, it's you like winning, to win but, yeah, and you hope course. everyone else does good. But like, yeah. you're more worried about your day than like, oh, we lost 2 1 in a tight game. It's like, yeah, but we took out our starters in the fifth <laughs> inning. Like, speaking well, of that, I, I was going through a the box course today to actually check on Zach. And I was looking at some of the records, like just generally in spring training, like teams float around 500, you know, the Orioles are 15 and three in spring training, (laughs) 15 and three, the Rays are four and 11. I'm looking at the outliers. The Rays are four and 11. Mariners are five and 12. Dodgers are 13 and four. Orioles are 15 and three because every time they put in their prospects, they're all amazing because they've had the first pick 15 times in the last 20 years. It is, Hall of Famer, it is Hall funny Famer though. Jackson Holiday. And I'm not I'm not trying to like I'm not trying to shit on a team here, but I mean like the Rockies are eleven and six, the Royals are eleven and seven, A's are ten and eight. It's like, well, is that gonna translate? I guess we'll see. Winning the Cactus League doesn't matter. What? What do you mean? I don't understand. <laughs> it is fun though during spring training when you're just like roasting everybody. We've had a couple years like that in Cubby Land. Where like every spring training game we put up ten runs and win and it is it is definitely fun. And so our third base coach, Mike Sarbra is his name, and he was with Cleveland for zillion years. And he the other, you know, so they're in Arizona, and he was saying he is so not used to like the low scoring games over here because anything that hits that is hit hard and in the air in Arizona is a home run. Like that is, that is true. Dude, it is so humid here, and Pete got one the other night, and it, like, didn't even get to the track in left center, and comes around, he's like, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a, that needs to be, it was like 104 at, like, 29, and we're just like, I mean, that's got to be a home run everywhere, and it wasn't even, like, close, and Sarby, like, that, it was that day when he was like, man, I'm not used to these three, two ball games here in spring training, and then he looks to us after that, and he's like, this is what I'm saying, like, that should be a home run in every on every day. Opening day I steal. Find my spring training stats. Opening day steal four innings nine punches today. Diablo. Also, we should talk about Frank, that. We should talk about steals. Opening real day quick, starter. I got. I got to give one more shout out. Zach will like it. Colin Ray started for the Brewers against the Cubbies. Four innings, no hits, one walk, seven punches. That a babe, C Ray. Have a day. Driveline guy's gonna be in their driveline guy. Probably gonna be in their rotation. Oh yeah, he's nasty. He and he's nasty. the man. He had to go overseas for a year. A uh, year and a half, but yes. Twenty twenty spring training. We only played thirteen games. I was hitting four fifty two with a five hundred on base and a seven forty two slug. So COVID yeah, hit, a, and you're like, yeah. damn it. I have a Breaking. swing of yours from that spring, righty, on my phone. They hit an absolute rocket. It was. I think it was you hit a double the right center. Until 2022 spring, I had epic spring training numbers. Except for 2019 was pretty rough. Jesus. Oh, I stink in spring. 2019 Nobody. spring, I hit 135. My 2017 spring was unbelievable. I played in 29 games, got 60 at bats, hit 383 with a 441 on base and a 750 slug. Ian, look. It, Hit seven homers in 2018 spring, too. Jeez. I like how Zach somehow knew where he had that and had it ready to go within the dates. The dates. Wait, wait, let me see. Let me see. Nobody loves a good right handed swing more than ZS74. Let me see. Oh. 
It was a good exactly. I was doing I was doing my Donaldson that spring. That was sick. Uh, but yes, Justin Steele opening day. Justin Steele opening day starter for the Chicago Cubs. That's awesome. Uh it's a huge Huge testament to the work he's put in to the season he had last year. It's a huge honor to start opening day. Um, That's what I was going to say. I don't think fans realize quite as, like, I'm sure they realize a little bit, but, like, opening day starter is, like, a huge honor within a team. Like, it's, like, it's a really cool thing to get that. Yeah, being the number one, like, being the opening day starter, being the number one, like, it's kind of – it's saying that you are the ace of the staff. Like you are going to anchor the staff. You're going to make the most starts this year. Like you're, we're going to roll you out there against the other team's best pitcher all year. And I think because the win loss thing has kind of gone away for pitchers because people don't care about it anymore. Mm -hmm. Like winning baseball games is what matters as a starting pitcher going six plus and putting your team and leaving the game ahead. That's what matters. That is like the job of the starting pitcher is to go out there and throw six plus and give up less runs than the other pitcher is. And so when you're the one, you're going against everybody's one. You're going against Evaldi. You're going against Garrett Cole. You're going against the Blake Snells. You're going against every other team's number one. And your job is to beat that guy. And that is the hardest thing you can have to do as a starting pitcher. And like that's a huge honor. Lester always took a ton of pride in that and like it's a big deal and being the you know being the guy that goes out there and does that matters like the, the other big thing for pitchers is just like being the guy that takes the ball in game on the playoffs like that's the other thing because you're going to pitch multiple times in that series they're going to ask you to go on short rest like those are the two things i think for starting pitchers that are huge huge honors do you guys open at home we open in texas damn it. oh well, my cool. god that's that is cool, going to but... be so dope It'd be it's gonna be cool. World Series champs are gonna be wearing their World way Series cooler. units. Stadium's gonna be packed. It's gonna be buzzing. Nope. That's Give your first time there, right? First time. <laughs> Give me yeah, I whiffed. I whiffed Arlington in 2019. I was hanging out with you guys. Yeah, but that wasn't even their new stadium. That was yeah, the ballpark at Arlington. That place is still sick. They uh, it's still standing, obviously, and it it's so beautiful on the outside. But they say um, that was like legitimately the hottest place in America to play. I wanted to yeah. play the ballpark in Arlington because I always really enjoyed the rookie the movie. I was gonna say yeah. I knew Ian that was that's my favorite baseball movie. I knew that was your favorite as well. I I really I almost bought tickets in like September of 2019 just to go because I was like fuck I've never been I really want to go. One of my regrets, like one of the few stadiums I haven't been to. That's a good one. I went and we sat in the, we were out in right field, like just below the second deck. And there was a homer hit that went like right over my head. But it was sick. That was, I think it was back when Josh Hamilton was still playing. So it was like 2015 that I went. Because that movie, the the, the rookie makes that stadium look like heaven. It's, it's, it's the way they shoot that in the early morning is incredible. Also, watching, like when we were in high school and watching Josh Hamilton highlights in a yeah. Rangers unit in that ballpark was so sick. I mean, those unis are those unis are legit. And like Michael Young, Beltre, Josh Beltre. Hamilton, like that Kinsler. era, Kinsler, that era of Prince Rangers Fielder. Baseball. Any more, Zach? What, Ian? Prince Fielder was on that team, huh? Yeah, he was. Yeah. I, yeah no, I, I... What team do you Zach think of when you think of Prince Fielder? Rangers. Brewers. I don't think, I don't think Brewers. I don't think Brewers, yeah. Honestly, I Tigers for me, because he was... There's pictures of him everywhere. Yeah, I went I to... Think a, him, I think of him as a Brewer and a Tiger. I went to a West Michigan Whitecaps game, Zach, uh, when Prince Fielder was there. And Cecil Fielder was signing autographs, and I have his autograph on a Yankees jersey. That's sick. Yeah. How many you the videos of Prince Fielder when he was like nine years old hitting him out of Tiger yeah. State? <laughs> yeah, insane. Fucking joke. How uh, how many All Star games do you think Prince Fielder went to? He played twelve seasons. Nine. I'm gonna go the opposite. I'm gonna go four. I was, I was gonna say four too. Six. Right in the middle. Pretty close. 
Dude, he his swing was so sick. So sick. that was also like not to get that was one of the saddest like retirement speeches. Yeah, that stunk. You'll ever his see. neck, right? Yeah. They said they doctors were like, You you can't keep playing. Like you're yeah. gonna you can't do it. That sucks. He had he had an eight year stretch where he played 157, 158, 159, 162, 161, 162, 162, 162. That's crazy. It's pretty impressive. His last full season, like as he was battling those injuries, 158 games, batting 305, 23 homers, 98 ribbies, 126 OPS plus All Star MVP votes that year. Just at age 31, obviously, and as his body was like beginning to fail, and cra- crazy, crazy year. So sick. We do open in Texas. Justin's just going to be the opening day starter. We don't know exactly what the the rest of the situation is going to look like. I think we're going to have three lefties in the in the rotation. And if JMO can't start the year because he's got a little bit of a back thing going, could be Drew Smiley, could be Assad, could be four lefties. Like I don't know how they're going to how they're going to do that. If they're going to throw some of them back to back. If they're going to space them out, it's an interesting predicament. But Drew Smiley, driveline guy. I vote for him. Driveline guy. That's it is funny that him. like I'll see who's like a driveline guy now, and I'm like, yeah, give him the like go go smile. <laughs> uh I got to, man. It's my new team. Can we talk briefly about Joey Votto signing a minor league deal with the Blue Jays? Pretty dope. One of my favorite players. I am praying that Joey Votto breaks with that team and hit some homers in Canada because is is there a Jesus. world that he would go to Triple A though? Like you're telling me, if he doesn't make the like, is he going? Did you there? see? I mean, did you see what he said playing. last year in Triple Ball? But did you see what he said though? Um, like I want the like, game to tell me when I'm done. No, he was like, I'm not here for like the shits and giggles. Like I'm a minor leaguer on a minor league deal right now. Like I'm, I know that I can still hit, but I need to prove myself. Well, and that's like just our Play interview with best. him. Like you can we could pick that up that he's not someone that's walking in there. Like, Oh, I'm yeah. like, I'm going to make this team. I'm Joey Votto. He's like, no, like I'm on a minor league deal. I have to go prove I can still do this, okay. which is sick. And hopefully he does. Like you said, Ian, that'd be so cool to have him hit he's, homers. Cause he is Canadian for those that do not know. Yeah. I did see, I did see a interview though, that he was doing like a couple of days before he signed where he was like, if I get to the big leagues and I can't hack it, like, then the game's told me I'm done, and like that's fine. But he's like, I just want the game to tell me that I'm done, not to not get an offer and to hang it up. And he's had all those shoulder issues. He was actually talking about like being like being able to maintain that slot and like the being able to get into a position. And he's just injury just couldn't do it, and he feels like he's in a place where he's healthy enough to do it, and he's if the game tells him he's done, but he wants the opportunity. I think that's awesome. Uh, yeah. Just just for like the record, 40... I, sorry, I couldn't find the quote, but he did say, and the reports are that he's expected to start the year in Buffalo. He, he mentioned something about starting in Buffalo, and there's been multiple reports saying the Blue Jays expect him to start the year in Buffalo and then see how that goes. And if he obviously plays his way onto the roster, he plays his way onto the roster. Yeah, that's true. I guess I shouldn't have said I don't expect him because, like, I also don't expect him to walk into camp this late and then just, like, make the team as on a minor league deal. So, yeah, that makes sense that he'd, like, hey, man, like, we'll get you accustomed, get you acclimated. If you go there and kill it, we will call you up. Like, I feel like that's a pretty safe bet. Can you imagine the spreads that they're going to get in Buffalo with Joey? (laughs) (laughs) I don't think, but it's not a rehab stint. A couple hundred. I mean, he's. I mean, a couple hundred that's, mil. Like, that's my gonna, go-to joke with like he's gonna, you he's when you were. Boys. But that's my joke when even you were in AAA. I'm like, where's our spread? Or if any ex big leader, like we had Jonathan Holder, I'm like, thanks for spread Holder. If we ever had anything good, and they were just on the team. Yeah, it's kind of mean, but it was funny. Yeah, to at me. that point, made the league minimum for two years. Talking about Joey, yeah. who's played for 17 years or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Okay, but league minimum, oh, boo hoo. I'd kill for one year. I mean, it wasn't though. boohoo. It was great, but no, I know it was more where I was and where Joey is are a little bit of a different situation. But again, it goes back to me having to break your shell 
have you been a little tough, a little tough nut to crack to be friends with? And I said, We're you not know what? Get this, into it. this is how a, I'm a, little, a little tough, Dakota. This is how we break them down. I make fun of them. I make them one of us. And I brought you in and look at where we are now. 199 episodes later. I'm not going to bring buds. this up because Tom said, I can't hear the story one more time. But don't break while you were breaking my show, you were also not inviting me to live with you. And then I was stuck oh, in a hotel. They were talking that about looks this very spot. similar to the hotel that Zach is in. But we'll move on. They were talking about this before the show. This we, is just a we, running we, topic in their lives, it seems. This is not a bit. Because so. it's this is real. So there's two things. This is, this is uh, I'm going to make a comment. Wait, neither of you, do you can know what's say anything. No, 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 no. Wait, time out, time out. You know what's unbelievable? Is your roommate who lived with you to replace me. Is no, you don't. No, no, no. That's what I was going to say. Eric Castillo is our bullpen catcher who is your roommate who you guys chose to invite to live with you instead of me. And I'm going to go up to Eric Castillo tomorrow and I'm going to ask him how great it was to hang out with you guys every day while I was Zach, can I get 30? out of the Marriott. Two things. <laughs> there, there are two things that neither Zach or Ian is allowed to contest. Oh, one. My God. One, Ian did not accept our invitation to live with us, which we did ask him before we asked Eric Castillo. That's a fact. It's not a lie. It's a fact. Second thing, not allowed to be contested. When we left the compound, Zach did not get up to give us a hug goodbye. You and guys were out, things of, are out facts. of the house. No, 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 no. I, even I said to. they can't be. I said they can't be contested. I said they can't be contested. Those are two facts. Whatever. I Basically, have, I, I'm I a good such friend. Such a vivid memory. I have such a vivid memory yes. of standing in that dining room and looking at them at the dining room table. Them Which you guys, just you, you didn't waiting. want to reach your hand out. Dakota, right. you're right. We we're not doing this. We're like not this. doing this. You guys are the one leaving. <laughs> the you thing is, dap, dap us up. How the thing we... is that that is something that I would do is I would sit there and be like, "Come on, bring it in. Come you on." Didn't. I mean, you're insane. We're not doing you this. Didn't. Go to you screen time. It. Ian, read the ad for screen you time. Just, this is you just indicted yourself. We're not doing this because indictment. I wonder. There's if... there's no world in which you no. Move I on. apologize to every listener. I let this get off the rails. I brought this. It's a hundred percent on me. And it's you know what, folks? It's not going to happen again. This is the last time you're hearing these stories. Because no. next time they do it, I'm cutting it. They know this. It's is just a, episode two hundred. We're going to go into a full recount of what happened. It's episode just disgusting. Episode. I'm bringing Eric Castillo on both, as a guest. It's disgusting that they both continue to contest these facts. These are facts that I'm happened. Bring Eric Castillo on as a guest, and I'm going to say Eric. Were you the first person that they asked to live with them? And he's going to say, yes, puppy. <laughs> you know what is a fact? One, we asked Ian first. He spit in our face. He said, I don't like this you guys that much. This I'm good in the hotel. Time. Second thing, Zach, me and Ian, we explored the country together, drove to Chicago. Great big hug. We gave each other a nice little bro, bro dap. Great big Hugged hug. Hugged it out. Um, said, All right. I'm sure you months did. Of, months of fighting through COVID together. Months of tennis months of just workouts in the garage yeah. just because you guys were teammates, wine, you guys were teammates wine for everything. by the bottle it's we were yeah teammates. i'm that's telling right. you see Sloan? that's why you didn't hug us because we were the competition no that's why you guys hugged each other <laughs> read the sloan? read the ad sloan sloan is the world's leading manufacturer at commercial plumbing systems, the company is at the forefront of the green building movement and provides smart, sustainable, and hygienic restroom solutions by manufacturing water efficient products, including flush meters, faucets, sink systems, soap dispensers, and fixtures for commercial, industrial, and institutional markets worldwide. To learn more, visit Sloan.com. What are your Sloan screen times? I did some I did some FaceTiming today for some workouts, and I don't like that. Four Mine was 227 for myself. You got three hours left, Bob. Fair. That's fair. I got to respect it. Yeah. Take we'll notes. Be expecting, eh? Yeah, we'll be expecting one at the end of the day, please. What's the, what's the low time so far? 227. I used to feel like I'm never going to beat you again now that you're working, man. Uh, it's a good possibility because it's like eight hours of the day. I look at my phone no more than 10 minutes. I'm a three, four, three forty seven for me. Three forty seven. Tom, um, what did you say? Six fifteen. It's almost midnight. I'll give you that. that's fine. That's fine. It's fine. We're all fine. 
That is episode 199. 199 of the Compound Podcast presented by What's Connect the Roasters. ConnectRoasters.com to get coffee. The phone number one more time. Dakota, one more time. Tell them the phone number if you want to leave a voicemail for episode 200. Again, Tom picks. Tom picks. If you don't get picked, you can yell at Tom. Comment. Comment. Tom, why didn't you pick me? Dakota, what's the phone number? 347-685-9404. One more time. That is 347-685-9404. Leave us a voicemail for episode 200. We will see you next week. Dakota's going to get ballooned. <laughs>